In this video, we will expand our previous discussion on the photoelectric effect. Please be sure you have watched that one before coming here. The objective for this video is to talk about how we use the concepts of the photoelectric effect together with the equations we learned to solve problems. Before we get started, let's take a moment to look at this equation again. Typically, you'll see the kinetic energy written like this. Typically, you'll see the kinetic energy of the released electron written like this. But let's look at all these other terms and see if we can make sense of what this equation really means in terms of words and concepts. H nu may sound familiar to you as the energy of a photon. We learned about this earlier in the chapter. And remember that this is the work function. And that is defined as the energy required to remove an electron from the surface. So if we think about what this means in words, all this equation says is that the energy of the photon that is shined on the metal goes first to removing the electron and that any leftover energy is given to the electron as kinetic energy. It's really just one very particular usage of the conservation of energy. In our previous video, we talked about the threshold frequency or the frequency that is required to remove an electron. Let's think about this in terms of our equation. If we are right at the threshold where the only energy given is the amount needed to release the electron and no more, that means that there is no extra energy to go into the kinetic energy. And so the kinetic energy would equal zero. With just a bit of algebra, that gives us either the work function or the threshold frequency that we are looking for. This is an incredibly common step in problems involving the photoelectric effect. You'll very often need to use information you're given to solve for the threshold frequency and then use that threshold frequency to solve for the desired answer. Hopefully this explanation helps the stick in your memory a bit more for when we move on to problems. Now, let's do a few examples. Let's do an example of one of these calculations. Take a minute to read this. Here, I give you the work function for calcium and ask what the minimum frequency of light is required to eject the electrons. For this, we'll need to use the steps highlighted in our earlier discussion of the equations and the concepts from our previous video. It is in many ways a two-in-one problem. We must first find the threshold frequency and then find the kinetic energy and the velocity at a different frequency of light. Let's first lay out our plan. You may not, be able, you may not always be able to do this when starting a problem, but whenever you can, it will help keep you on track and avoid small, silly mistakes. For part one, we have an equation that relates the work function to the kinetic energy. From here, we also know the, know the work function. It's given in the problem. This gives us the minimum frequency of light that will eject an electron from calcium. For the second part, we want to know the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. So we solve for E by filling in the new frequency and the work function. Now that we have a plan, we'll work through this with numbers. We must first find the threshold frequency. This is when the electron will be knocked loose, but no kinetic energy will be transferred. Since the kinetic energy equals zero, we'll know that h nu is equal to the work function. 
So now let's solve for frequency. This gives us the minimum frequency of light that will eject an electron from calcium. Now moving on to the second part. We want to know the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. So we'll solve for E by filling in the frequency and the work function. Once we know the kinetic energy, we can fill into 1 half mv squared to solve for V. We simply fill in our values for mass and for kinetic energy and solve for V to get our answer. So let's quickly go back to our plan and review what we did. In order to do the first part, where we found the minimum frequency of light used for the photoelectric effect in calcium, we used our equation and the concept that at the minimum frequency, the ejected electron will have an energy of zero to solve for the minimum frequency. The second part of the problem used our new frequency and the work function that was given in the problem in order to solve for the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. We then used the energy, the kinetic energy equals one half mv squared to solve for the velocity. Our only objective for the video was to walk you through an example using the photoelectric effect and help you solve one particular problem. Please remember that chemistry problems are about combining different ideas and different equations and different concepts, and that not every single problem you're given is going to be identical to one you've seen. But you can use the concepts that we talked about this in the video and the different problem solving techniques that we talked about in this video and apply it to all of these types of problems in different ways and different types of puzzle pieces to fit together to solve the problems.